Mm, yeah. I love my HBCU. Uh. And boy, boy, I love it, love it. Yeah. I love it, love it. Yeah, yeah. I love my HBCU. Yeah. And man, yeah. I hope my team they won one. Yeah. I hope my team they won one. Mm, yeah. Man, I hope my team they won one. Won one. Yeah. I hope my team they won one. Yeah. Yeah. I tune into the HCCU Sports Lab to see if my team won a loss. If they lost, I'm quiet as a mouth. But if they won, keep tab. Uh, I'ma do the dab, yeah. Dr. Cavill, he know what he be talking about. Mike and Charles, they know what they be talking about. They compress the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they gon' tell you if your team, if they won a loss, yeah. And who the ball, who the ball. So listen to Professor, uh, yes sir, yes sir, and pay attention. This is Dr. Lil with Inside HBC Sports Live with Mike Washington and Charles Bishop. As you see, Mike Washington is playing hooky today and out on assignment, <laughs> but we got Charles Bishop back in the house. We'll have another guest join us a little bit. I'm going to keep that as a surprise uh, as he did some breaking news yesterday and now it's confirmed, so now y'all can really believe because all y'all were questioning the other day. We'll see how that goes with that saying, but you know how we live. Welcome to episode 199 of Inside the HBC Sports Live radio show and podcast. The show that's covering the sporting HBC dash for all things HBC sports institutions, large and small, from the NAIA to the NCAA. We share insights and information on HBC sports culture, HBC athletic aesthetics to facilitate the story of HBC athletic program in the business of HBC sports. I'm your host, Dr. Yana Cavill, along with my co-host, Mike Washington, Charles Bishop. We're filming from our home studios and sending a signal live. Case Waste 1230 AM studios with the Texas Radio Hall of Fame. Ralph Cooper in the beautiful home of Texas Southern University from Houston, Texas. Today's episode of Inside the HBC Sports Lab is sponsored by THG Agency, LLC. THG Agency is a company that provides, provides sporting and educational consulting and data analytics. Charles, how you doing, man? I'm doing great, Dr. Bill. It's good to be back in the lab uh, with all our lab listeners and getting back into the Lord HBCU athletics and sports business. Yeah, yeah, but we're going to take it out of that. We're going to Major League World Series. You know, there's a tie, Atlanta Braves, you know, HBCU players. God, when you talk about the series they had with FAMU and Gramlin earlier, and so you have many ties there to HBC over the years. But first, were you able to go to the game yesterday? I did not go to the game yesterday, Good. but I was. <laughs> yeah. The Astros won. I know, right? Out there, so now we understand who was the lucky Travis Foot. You were there on I, Tuesday, so they won. So tell us about that experience on the Series side. Oh, it, it was tremendous. I uh, get an opportunity to go to my uh, first World Series game and, and then a uh, team that you grew up rooting for with the Atlanta Braves uh, taking on the Houston Astros, of course. Uh, but since become a uh, Astros fan, especially with Dusty Baker uh, at the helm of the, of the uh, Houston Astros, but tremendous experience, tremendous experience to get an opportunity to take it all in. Of course, I grew up playing baseball uh, all the way up until Jackson State. Then the Plaza grabbed me, but I'm, I've been I've maintained my loyalty in terms of being a baseball fan. So you know, I love the sport and to actually take in the the penultimate uh, experience with the World Series. That that was a lot of fun. No doubt about it. When you talk about uh, baseball, you know, we really go into the spring part of it. We go into baseball. Mike and yourself, Mike, sons played baseball all the way through. You played some baseball. You covered baseball. Big fan. We've gone to the SWAC tournament multiple mm -hmm. times over the year, called some games here and there. So, you know, it's not like it's something new to us. So it's big. And I was excited to have you uh, have that opportunity. Shout out to your mom. Great gift. <laughs> yes. Mom's the best, man, they just find ways to make you just roll over and be like, I didn't see that one. You think you just got to <laughs> play, they find some way just to let you know, yeah, I, yeah, I got you. I, I know, you. right? How about that? So that, so that, yeah, that was really cool. That was really cool. But to, to bring this full circle to come back to the HBCU side of things, you know, as a professor on the show, Professor Bishop, you know, adjunct professors, full-time professor, whatever, in HBCUs, when the student athletes or really anybody associated with doing things on behalf of the, uh, the university, you know, they get a pass. You send out a note and say, hey, these students are excused for your absence. So I just want you to know I did fill out the form and send it in to the provost to make sure that you're good to go. So you, I appreciate that, Doc. You will have to make up the work. 
and you'll make it up today on the show. Yes, yes, I will. Yes, I will. Looking forward to it. <laughs> you have none other than the Steve Gaither. We was trying to buy a little time to get him set up and let him come on in. Uh, um, so we got some news that we will get into. He broke some news the other day, like he finds a way to always do. You know, um, he could send me a, one of them stool pigeons and kind of let me know. But I understand the game. I understand the game. Got to be out there. We're going to get on the level. We can tell me. I promise. I hold it. I get a lot of it. I can't tell it. So you can tell me. Uh, with that being said, we decided that the fact that you were able to break the news and continue to do what you do from that. And it was um, to those that do not believe in black institutions and black networks, I guess we can say it was confirmed to some way today because a white institution put it out there. But that's another story. I, I, I'm not going to beat up on folks like that. Before we get into that story, because we're going to take a little deeper dive before we get into the second half of the show where we get in the band, uh, sporting, marching sport, which I really would like to get your framework because you cover the D2s, CIAA, SIC as well. So you can give us a little different perspective. So I'm going to see how you grade my poll ranking. Now, don't forget, I do control the mic and all these kind of things. And I <laughs> want to invite back, so watch yourself. Be careful. Now, no, just kidding. Tell the truth. Tell the truth. Get out there. Let me shout out for these folks and give these folks a love. The reason why we do what we do uh, before we get into some news of the day. Ricky Burton is here. In terms of that, Chuck Hunt, Troy Lamont Coleman, and still but hurt Aggies in the house. <laughs> <Don't> <laughs> That's real talk. I like it. I love people that, can as take a it, that they give it, but they can also take it. I like that a lot. Uh, Willie Alex Hine, good evening, everyone. CIAA invading the lab. Yeah, y'all are in the house, as always. I appreciate it. We got a resident expert in here. Mary Allen, hello, everyone. No doubt about it. Karen Griffin's always making sure we get it going in the lab. What else we got before we get back to it? Jay Mox, Ricky Burden, as I said. Lonnie Shaw, Willie Mack, G. Boom Holly. Yeah, that's our cameraman. He get, keeps us going to make sure that all our social media platforms are going good. Shout out to G. Boom Holly. Chad Cooper. Uh-oh, man, y'all got a tough one. Y'all going to surprise the world down there in Tallahassee? Uh, Kimberly Reynolds, president of just previous president of the National Alumni Association. Let me get that correct. Uh, ended her term as she did a wonderful job doing that time speech, but she's still staying involved as you would imagine and make sure things continue to go forward in so many different ways. W. Sherman Miller. With that, we'll come back and do some more shout outs. Let's go just go into this hot news of the day. You broke some news yesterday talking about that Howard University potentially could be looking at the CAA. Now it comes out some news. And you said some other schools and didn't put them out at the time. Uh, and you're talking about the VA, but now it looks like they're talking about Howard and Hampton. Tell us what was the framing of that story and why was it important to get it out there and get in front of the people? Well, uh, first off, Doc, thanks for having me on. I, I really appreciate it. I watch every show. I'm always in the comments, so it's, it's, it's always good to get on and be on with you and, and your esteemed colleague, my esteemed colleague, Charles. Um, but, yeah. Um, Before that, you get into it, let me give you a shout out there. Uh, your, your, your comment game is high. Your comment game is high. <laughs> There's a couple of folks that can work with you and they bring it really good, but your comment game is high. A couple of other folks I'll give a shout out to have good comments throughout the show, but appreciate you bringing it like you do. Go ahead. I appreciate that. You know, a one liner here and there, but yeah, um, basically, so a couple of weeks ago, um, you know, some folks that are in the industry that really cover uh, alignment, uh, realignment ask, had I heard anything about Howard? And at that point I hadn't, um, but you know, this was a couple of weeks back and they were saying that, you know, they were having some level of talks with the CAA. Um, you know, uh, Dr. Frederick uh, was the, recently the, the uh, head of the chancellors and presidents in the MEAC. Uh, he transitioned, that transition happened back in July uh, where the now former South Carolina state president uh, was there temporarily until he was exited. Now uh, North Carolina Central's president, a Dr. chancellor. Ken Yeah. Yep. Right, so, you know, um, so that so it's been a couple months now. Um, we saw them at the forefront back in 2020 when you know they lost to three schools and really being out there in the forefront. But he's been kind of laying back in the background. And uh, obviously, Howard has a lot of things going on as a university right now. So uh, really kind of gone under the radar. 
Um, but it's been something that's, you know, been brewing at least since, you know, I've, I heard about it as far back as the night when they played Morgan State. Um, so it's kind of been on the back burner. But, you know, you hear a lot of things and um, some stuff, you know, you hear it and, and it just kind of floats in the wind. But you hear it again from somebody else who, you again, knows and it starts to hold a little bit more weight. And then the news came out earlier this week with uh, the the exit of JMU that's uh, impending. Um, you know, you're seeing these dominoes start to shake here in, in the mid, in the mid Atlantic, you know, south, you know, upper South in MEAC territory, but also in CAA territory, uh, in big South territory as well. So, um, you know, that news came out, um, and, and the sources that I had were, were good and solid that there was some level of talks. Nobody's saying that they're going to join, you know, join right. at any time or today or tomorrow, whenever, but that they, they are having the conversation and, you know, again, you know, as we talk about all the time at this point in 2021, um, I mean, even before then, but with Texas, Oklahoma, just kind of really just reigniting all that. It's like, uh, what was it Pangea? You know, it was one earth, right? Until uh, until it wasn't. So, you know, things uh, things are kind of ebbing and flowing. I heard the Howard thing and in searching and some, one of the schools that they were mentioning was Monmouth, who uh, is in the Big South uh, for the CIAA, uh, CAA North. Um, and so that would obviously affect impact the big south football wise to lose mm. as they're also getting ready to lose Kennesaw State um and so um yeah they're also uh UNC Greensboro is also in the mix which is right in the backyard of those Aggies um they share the same city the same colors um and so um I know a lot of uh, a lot of UNC G Spartans will be at uh at, at their homecoming um this weekend so you know they're they kind of they have a they're kind of tied to the hip a little bit. And then Elon, um, you know, uh, is in the CAA already. So I kind of started digging on that. Uh, A&T says that they're not talking to anybody. They haven't had any official talks. But again, as we know, and people who do this, you know, talks occur all the time, whether or not they'll happen. Um, you never know. But again, with the exoduses that we've seen uh, over the last couple of years, I think any time there is talk with any HBCUs or, or any, or especially particularly in the MEAC, but then again, we'll see what happens with the Big South. Um, I think we should always at least kind of know what's going on so nobody's caught unaware as we have been both previously. Yes, one of the key words that I want uh, the lab lecturers to know is plausible deniability. <laughs> <laughs> plausible like that. deniability. You've seen this at the professional level when you have players that have um, their advisor, for lack of better words, that will do the talking. That way they can always say, no, I did not talk. Now, your representative talk, that's no different with commissioners of a conference or athletic directors. They'll circumvent it and let somebody else that they trust do the talking and do all the work until it's ready. And then they officially do it by the end and dime. You find out that it's real and they're talking about it. Um, now they can say yes, but then anytime else you ask them now, a new source like Steve Gaither will ask them, they can say, no, we have not, meaning I have not officially taught, but that doesn't mean the, the best friend over here that's assigned to that has taught. So you got to understand some of these key buzzwords with that. We're going to take a break. We'll come back. We're going to get into marching poll, but we, we will carry on with this just a little bit because I want to give a framework an update, give Charles a chance to give his uh, framework on this, and then we'll get back to it. So stick with us. This is Dr. Bill inside the HBC Sports Lab. We'll be right back at this break in terms of this breaking news that Steve broke yesterday. That's why I'm calling it the breaking news in terms of what I call conference churning and how it continues to churn. Nothing is imminent. We want to make sure we make that clear here. Uh, but it is not just nothing. There is something going on here. And our responsibility at this point is to make sure that our constituents know as much as we can provide them at a given time. Stick with us with Dr. Bills inside the HBC Sports Lab. We'll be right back after this break with Charles and Gaither. We have a visiting professor, adjunct Stephen Gaither in the house tonight. This is Ryan Fulford. A.D. Drew and I are co-hosts of the BCSN Sports Wrap. We talk about all things related to HBCU athletics. From the games, teams, coaches, and fan interest stories, we cover it all. You can find our shows on Facebook at BCSN Sports Wrap, YouTube at MyJBN Online, and everywhere you listen to podcasts like Anchor, Spotify, Google, and Apple Podcasts. You can also find the show on the Jericho Broadcast Network's app. Make sure to download. We look forward to you joining the conversation and being a part of the show. 
Since 2002, Empowerment Resources, Inc., a nonprofit organization, has empowered more than 1,500 youth and adults in Duval and surrounding counties. Through its programs, Journey into Womanhood, Girls Mentoring, Life Skills for Teens, and Parenting Education Coaching. To get involved with programs, volunteer, or donate, visit www.empowermentresourcesinc.org. Follow us on social media, facebook.com forward slash empowerment.resources and instagram.com. From novice to aficionado, find yourself here. High quality cigars plus personal customer service with Slow Burn. Visit our website, www.slowburnwaco.com. Slow Burn is Waco's only mobile cigar lounge featuring a meticulous curated collection of premium cigars. It's more than a mobile lounge. It's an environment and an experience rich in history, luxury, and personality. An elegant extension of any celebration occasion. It's the perfect escape and meeting place. A space where you can relax or enjoy a shared passion. Have Slow Burn plan your next big event or before you are planning to celebrate your win over your athletic rival, you can shop our collections at www.slowburnwaco.com. But if they want to tap, uh, I'ma do the dab, yeah. Press the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they gon' tell you if your team, if they want a lot, yeah. And who the ball, who the ball. So listen to Professor Yesa yes, and pay attention because he's going to teach a lesson. Yes. This is Dr. Kavir with Inside HBC Sports Lab with Mike Washington and Charles Bishop. We have none other than Professor Stephen Gaither in the house. I might have to send him some cigars for the way he's working his magic and getting it done all around time, all the time. Slowburnwaco.com. Check it out. Get it going. With that being said, I want to jump back in here real quick before we get into the marching polls. I did want to give you some chance to kind of comment on this from this framework, uh, but let's kind of level the field a little bit. If the things go the way they are, you're not talking about the CIAA. Everybody wanted to fold on the MEAC uh, and thought the Big South was doing things, but if you're talking about Hampton and Monmouth, now you, we already talked about the fact that, don't forget, the Kennesaw State had already decided it was gone. North Alabama was gone to the Sun Atlantic. So you're talking about five schools football-wise in the Big South. That would be five schools in the MEAC. Now, a lot of folks will fall apart on the MEAC. But one thing to consider about this is the MEAC is not looking for an automatic bid in terms of football. Now, you can talk about scheduling issues and things of like this. Uh, but they have a great contract that signs them up that gears their champion. Hell, it could be two teams for all that it matters to make sure that they meet the standards of the contract that they send to the celebration bowl. They would be good and be eligible for that money. Now, there may be some clauses we are not aware of in the contract that has a minimal threshold of teams. I hadn't heard anything about that. So let me be clear in terms of what that means. And you got to remember, in basketball, which is where you really have your money, and the threshold in terms of the automatic bid is six, they still would be at seven. So they still wouldn't be in danger from that side. So when you roll all that together, you know, how do, how do you feel about that, Charles, in terms of what the landscape could look like if something like this would go down based on that additional information I share with you, Joe? Well, that's actually the million dollar question that I was gonna ask because uh, I think for the layperson, they always ask, you know, when with, with regards to conference turning, when something starts happening in one conference, you see this, this domino effect happening over here in this other conference. So that's what I wanted kind of laid out uh, in terms of the potential dominoes. We, 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 we get the story with regards to Howard talking to the CIA, uh, CAA, but you have this movement happening in a completely different conference. So if you could, for, for our listeners, just kind of lay out the potential of, 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 of what we could be looking at. Well, when you look at it like that, you still have the issue with the OVC being at six. Hmm. You have the Southland being at six. Uh, you have the Atlantic Sun at five, right? You have the WAC at five. They have another program going to Division Two, moving up, so it's essentially at six. You would have the Big South 
moved down to five, which means over a two-year period, if they don't get back up, they would lose their automatic bid in football to the playoffs. Uh, Sun Atlantic, that's why Sun Atlantic in the WAC, to give you an example, that's why they did an agreement this year because both teams only had five teams that were eligible for the playoff. So they came together and created a united front such that that united front could get an automatic bid to the playoffs at the FCS level. So that tells you how big it is uh, in terms of what that looks like. And then you would have the MEAC go to five teams. But again, it's important for people to contextually understand that for the SWAC and the MEAC, they are not looking for an automatic bid to the FCS playoffs. So the standard of being at five programs is not as important. Now, there is a caveat that we've seen this in terms of baseball, which is an issue for the MEAC in terms of the period. The state division one, you need a number of certain sports to be played, and that threshold right. is six. So in some cases, the Big South and the MEAC would be in trouble over a two-year period. So those are some things that you must consider when you look at that uh, in terms of that. Before we get into marches, I did want to give Stephen Gaither, since he broke this, to find a way if he wanted to provide, you know, a final comment in terms of some of the things that I just laid out from his perspective and based on what you've heard. Yeah, um, I think the main thing is people just need to understand, especially here on the East Coast uh, where I am, that this stuff is uh, – it's 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 gonna. Get, this is just the way of the world right now, and probably going forward at this point. I think um, you know we're probably gonna see. Um, you know, again, you talk about baseball with the MEAC. Uh, you know, that is that is something that they're gonna have to address. Uh, Norfolk State as a baseball school. Um, you know, one of the baseball schools up north, and their their programs coming along. You know how you know keeping keeping the membership happy, um, and also uh, you know I didn't get a chance to ask this question uh, with new newly uh, conference uh, commissioner elect uh, Sonia Steele, but I was going to ask about, um, you know, finding additional sports to add. Um, you know, you look at a Howard, uh, they are already in the NEC in a number of different sports because they're in sports that the MEAC does not offer. Um, and obviously it just makes it simpler when everybody can be under the same umbrella, just like they were in the SWAT for the, uh, for the women's soccer at one point. Um, so, you know, for the, you know, for, I think for the MEAC, um, that's going to be a question to answer. Like you said, they don't have to worry about the automatic bid, um, but just making keep what, doing what they can to keep the membership happy. Um, you know, Howard, Howard has a big stick now. Um, you know what I mean? So if you can maybe get some other schools to get into some of those sports that they have and keep them as close to the close to you as they can, because the more you're together, you can have you can forge relationships, and the easier it would be in my estimation for them to make any type of jump. So. Um, I think it's going to be important to see that how many schools can get on the same page about same sports, even if everybody doesn't do it. Um, you know, you want to make sure that you're competitive. And I thought it was really interesting today how science still uh, the new commissioner elect um, is trying is uh, really focusing on academics. Um, I, know, I know you talked to her, your question on that um, positioning themselves as the elite eight and saying, yeah, you know, we want a lot of school. I know a lot of schools are people put them in and say, Hey, you guys should add them this, that, and the third, but there's a specific fit that they're looking for. Um, and I think it's going to be interesting to see if they continue to spell out what that fit is for future membership and as, as well as retaining the membership that they have and giving benefits, you know, outside of just the field of competition. Great point. Great points there. Let's shift into this marching pole sport, marching sport, as we like to get into it. And if we have a little time on the back end, we might dive just to touch and see if there's some questions from those listening. And I know they're churning and getting that information out there. So with that, let's get into the top 10 of the marching sport. Let's see what's going on there. Uh, you have those teams just dropping out. You have Miles that dropped out of this week, oh. uh, which meant North Carolina a t blue and gold marching machine. Uh, Miles, Golden Bears, took an L last week and it pushed them out to some degree but we'll see how things continue to move at number 10 north carolina a t blue and gold marching band one and one they were not ranked ranked last week they jumped into the poll at number nine alabama state mighty marching hornets two and two oh and two but their losses are to the top team 
or top bands, as I like to call them, teams as well, because it's a marching sport, right? Um, which has allowed them to stay at number nine. Alcorn State, the sound of dynamite, bands 3 0, 2 0, 2 and 22 points at number eight. They tie, top, take on a top five team. Some people say they're in the top 10 because of their matchups. They happen to be 3 0, but it gets a little tighter as they go into the second half of the season, not only on the field in terms of football, but in terms of the field and in the stands and after the game in terms of the fifth quarter. It should be interesting in the next couple of weeks, starting this Saturday. And number seven, Kentucky State Mighty Marching Thoroughbreds, 4-0. They took down Miles College. That's why Miles College got out of it. This mighty bunch of band members are small, but they're loud. Remember, they have the D1 upset over Tennessee State and the Aristocrats early this year, getting it done. But they stay at number seven, but they continue to win. Dropping out of the top five, Prairie View. AM marching storm two and one uh, as they took a hit to Southern on the road. Kept it close, but couldn't get over the hump uh, in terms of that. That's the bottom five teams as we close out the top five. Let's get in the top five. I see Twisted and Turner, Charles Bishop over there at number five. Norfolk State, the Spartan Legion marching band, two and one, six, seven points. They drop up one spot. Big time for them. They get it done. As they continue to move up the charts, both in football and in the marching sport. And number four, Bethune Cookman, the marching Wildcats, 2 0, 7 0. They move up one spot. Hadn't had a lot of matchups. We'll see what that does to them as the yeah. season prevails. It's going to be hard to stay in the top five if you're not bringing your band around and having competition. We talk Uh-oh. about wins and losses. You got to get in there. And number right. three, Southern Human Geek Box, 4 0, undefeated, 2 0. Got another swag conference win. Narrow. Not quite like what the football team did, but they got it done. <laughs> Two first place votes. So they had a first place vote, 82 points. Uh, they do drop down a spot. At Jackson State, the Sonic Boom of the South. Four and one, two and one. Two first place votes, 83 points. They jump up, big victory, and they continue to do things and get it done. At number one, Florida and in the March of Sport, four and oh, two and oh. Four first place votes, 90 points. They just keep holding on. They have some art bands coming to them. I think Grambling is supposed to come. Should be interested to see what that happens this week. Then you had it in the season. They, that big Florida classic. We'll see. Can they hold on to number one? It looks like Jack State keeps easing up, finding that first battle that was so close they got done. Can they find a way to ease up with that? Let me go to you first, Charles, and then I'm going to save the next comments for Stephen Gaither so he can add in a little bit about the Division II bands that we should also focus on maybe a little more. Um, even though I've given some love, but they got to come with it now. You got to win. You got to have matchups. You got to get on the road. You got to support your team. You got to have band march. You can't get in here just in no poll and people voting because you can get a whole bunch of folks to support you. It don't work like that. Yet. That wrong poll. Go to the mother place you want them kind of poll. Charles, <laughs> what do you thought? Uh, you know what, Dr. Bill? You know how I am about bands that, that, that don't show up. You know, you, if it's March of Sport, I need to see a competition. But boom, Cookman, ah, I don't know how long y'all can stay in the top five if y'all aren't competing and getting on the road and taking on some bands. You know, uh, Jackson State had a gimme this weekend. So it's like, okay, I'll, I'll let them stay there. But i tell you what, what was interesting was uh, the nice little matchup with uh, Prairie View and the Human Jukebox. And I, you know, everybody knows me. I, everybody knows I'm, I'm, I'm a Jackson State guy. But my God, that jukebox is just on another level. That jukebox is on another. And you know, it's something when, when you got former Sonic Boom alums like you know what, that jukebox, they, they the truth. They, they done evened out that sound. So I, you know, I, 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 I just want to see where, where how, how the Boom and jukebox, how they kind of shape up for this huge one coming up in a couple of weeks. So it, that was going to be interesting. I like this one. This is a previous band. Uh, hey, uh, G Boom Holly puts out there. Ain't no way PV lost to Southern with putting up a losing score at the half. Oh, my God. Did you have to call him up <laughs> and putting up a losing score? That's the best way to look at it. He is a former drum major, so I give him a little credit on that. Let me go to Steve Gates and let me hear his thoughts on the marching sport in my top 10 rankings. What do you say? 
Ah, uh, this is a. Uh, it, it could go left right here, you know. Um, <laughs> I think um, <laughs> it could go left right here, you know. I, I'm, you know, I, I definitely enjoy the bands, and I've gotten to enjoy them more as I get along. Um, I think that you know we talk about in the playoff systems and how automatic bid, you know, there's automatic bids. There's no automatic bids in D2, and and you know, or or in the FCS having somebody on the committee to be there in the room. I'm gonna advocate for a band in the CIAA. Um, and this is because I've seen this band, um, I've seen this band travel and, you know, CIAA bands, uh, a lot of times, you know, they're, you know, they're, they're smaller. A lot of that is funding and things like that. And, uh, sometimes, they don't, you know, the travel has been cut down a lot for some bands, but I'm gonna give uh, some love to the Bowie State, uh, SOS band, uh, because, because they, they've been on the road. They've been on the road this year. I've noticed, um. You know, they came down to Salisbury to take on Livingstone College, which is probably a six hour bus ride, five and a half, six hour bus ride. Um, so they've been there. They were last week. They made the trip down, not quite as long a trip, but the trip to Virginia Union. So I want to get a Bowie State uh, SOS. Them, uh, I like it. I like it. Nice. That's dope. I like that. Um, oh. You know, uh, of course, my red 12 man. My Rams, you know, I think they, they made it. The uh, rest of the sound made it on the road to uh, to North Carolina Central. I would say they got the win there. Um, you know, I would say they got the win there. I don't think they got any points for that one. But, uh, but yeah, I would say Bowie State out of the CIAA. Um, Virginia State is always uh, usually pretty solid. Uh, but I'm going to advocate for one that isn't up there. But I think, um, I think I, I'm going to call it out. I think there's a little bit of swag bias here. And uh, and that's gonna be Del <laughs> and that's gonna be Michigan State University, the, the Spartan Legion, man. Spartan Legion, Cole. Oh, you they want call. to hire? You hey, want to hire? Yeah. Tough, hey, I, I would like. I would hey, like to. I would, now, big, watch up. One of the things I would say that I think your point is made, uh, and, and it's great point. I will give you much credit for this. What happened to Spartans that got them in a little bit of trouble is what they made an excellent trip down here to Houston, mm -hmm. and so were eight bands. The way we did that first poll, and this will be good for those that hadn't heard this yet, and so I'm glad that you bring that up, is there were four winners and four losers. Mm -hmm. They were five. So they got the loss, which bumped them down, and they've been working, steady working themselves up. So they kind of come, it's one of those polls. They got more matchups too now. They got, yeah. yeah. So there's more matchups is going to give them a chance to continue to fight and show out. So you're ahead of it, as you always are, breaking the news. Catch it, Steve. Did it again. Enough folks stay Spartans getting it done. We'll be right back after this break, Dr. Mills, inside HBC Sports Lab. We're going to break down some matchups in the second half of the show. Stick with us because we have our experts here that's going to really give you some love and give you some insight on the mid-major division before we close out with the major division. Stick with us. We'll be right back with Professor Bishop and Professor Gates. It's never too early to plant the seed, to share the tradition, and instill a sense of pride in your HBCU with your little ones. HBCU Pride and Joy Children's Boutique helps you share your school spirit with a wide selection of adorable kids' apparel and accessories officially licensed from your favorite HBCU. Visit HBCUPrideJoy.com and follow us on all social media at HBCU Pride Joy on Facebook and Twitter. This is Carlos Brown, letting you know that we're on the move. You can now catch the Carlos Brown Show beginning this July on the Black College Sports Network each and every Saturday from 11 to 1 Eastern Time. That's 10 to 12 Central Time. Same time, new place. On Facebook at the Carlos Brown Show and Black College Sports Network. Online at www.mybcsn.net and on the BCSN app, available on Google Play and the Apple App Store. For 200 years, Montgomery, Alabama has been making history by people who had the courage to stand up for change. Today, this riverfront city has been reborn, embracing the past and looking forward to the future. From the National Memorial for Peace and Justice to the stage of the Alabama Shakespeare Festival, this is where history was and is made. We are proud to call Montgomery home, and together, we can be the change. Press the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they gon' tell you if your team, if they want a lot, yeah, and who the ball, ball, ball. So listen to Professor, uh, yes sir, yes sir, and pay attention, cause he gon' teach a lesson. 
This is Dr. Ville with Inside HBC Sports Lab with Mike Washington, Charles Bishop, sitting in as a guest professor, guest lecturer. For Mike Washington is none other than Steve Gaith of HBCU Game Day. He continues to put the pen to paper and break it like no one else. But now he gets the chance to talk about it a little bit. And then we have the professor, extraordinaire, visiting professor. We gave him a little update in his rank now. Professor Bishop getting it done. With that, let's get right into it. We have our HBCU mid-major homecoming game of the week. You know, usually it's our classic game of the week, but we don't have one on the, on the mid-major side. So we're going to go with the homecoming game. This is in Raleigh, Durham County Memorial Stadium, homecoming, CIAA Johnson Golden Bulls, 0-7, 0-5 at St. Augustine, 0-6, 0-1. Somebody's going to get a victory. Is it going to be the homecoming <laughs> or homecoming? Steven? You got to find a way to make this sound exciting. How are you going to do that? Man, you know, um, <laughs> a couple of weeks ago, you know, John C. Smith has been playing, uh, has been playing football since 1892, uh, and uh, they've been trying to figure it out since then, it seems like. Um, <laughs> and, you know, God bless him. This ain't the, the year is going to happen, you know. Uh, my alma mater, Winston Salem State, we're having a, a bad year by our standards. Um, but, uh, you know, we always know we can count on John C. Smith for a win. And they did not discount, discourage us. Um, you, you know, I, I said, hey, if they don't beat Winston this year, after Shawan scores 73 points on them, they're never going to beat them. in true to form, they did not. And uh, St. Aug did even worse, <laughs> um, which is the bad thing. That 41-0 for, win for the Rams, that offense, they made them look like the greatest show on turf. So, uh, you know, these – I mean, when you look at these two guys, these two guys, I, I, this is somehow the TV game, I believe. Um, You're out. Wow. I, I believe this is the TV game. I hopefully I'm not. I, hopefully I'm mistaken. I really hope I'm mistaken. I'll be wrong, and I don't like to be wrong. Uh, but right, I mean, if you look at them, I mean, right now Johnson C. Smith is scoring 11.9 points a game, which is uh, you know still almost a field goal better than St. Augs nine points per game. Uh, and then you look on scoring defense, uh, Johnson C. Smith is allowing 32 a game, and uh, St. Aug is allowing 36. Um, so yeah, the good th the good news is there are no ties in college football. Somebody's gonna win and somebody's gonna lose. Uh, there's already been a funeral. If though. I forced you to pick it, who you who will you pick? I gotta pick Smith. They had a funeral for Saint Aug, and uh, they felt comp they had a funeral. They had an actual live Falcon uh, come into Charlotte today, um, and so uh, and so you know uh, yeah, it was pretty funny on social media. So. Yeah, I, I would say that uh, Smith gets their one win of the year um, against St. Augustine's University and St. Aug. You know, hey, CIAA basketball season's right around the corner, baby. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Great job, Charles. Uh, any comments you want to make? I know Steve just showed out, but hey, if, if Steve say uh, Johnson C. Smith is gonna get the dub, I'm going with Johnson C. Smith on this one. Somebody has a gift. Yeah, so, that means uh, they, uh, what we call a hashtag, protect your homecoming. Protect your so homecoming. This weekend. It's Halloween, so it is scary season. So this is this is about <laughs> scary. <laughs> exactly. Oh, Let's go into this HBCU independent non-conference mid-major division game of the week. It will feature what will become an SIEC matchup, but right now, Edward Waters transitioning. Jackson, Florida, community field and stadium. Edward Waters has uh, held them their own and gotten them some SIC victories, but now they're on to a surging Miles Golden Bears that are trying to find their way into the SIC championship game. Number nine ranked Miles Golden Bears, four and four on the season three and Owen oh, conference where uh, divisional play where it really counts um, against Edward Waters Tigers with the new stadium get it done. Let me know, Professor Bishop, what did you say on this matchup? A little bit of up and down for Miles, uh, but I still like Miles' defense to get it done against Edward Waters, get going on the road. Uh, they've had a couple of uh, surprising losses out there, but uh, I still like to see the Miles Golden Bears. I think they'll go into Edward Waters and take care of business this weekend. Good deal. Stephen Gaither, what do you say about this SIAC matchup? Yeah, I am. Uh, I, I've been impressed uh, and to a certain extent with uh, Edward Waters again coming from the NAIA to D two uh, as a solid jump up, and they've gotten some wins. They've uh, you know they they've made their presence known. But um, you know, there's certain games that are child's play and certain play for grown men, and 
Um, right now with Miles, everything they got on the line, there's no way yeah. I'm betting against Coach Ruffin uh, and those guys. Um, Tigers, just hold on to your stripes. You know, better days are ahead. You know, Doc. Let me sneak one more in there. Oh, go ahead, Carl. Coach Ruffin's name is floating out there with a, a couple of jobs. So, uh, I just want to see what, what Coach yeah, Ruffin yeah. does the rest of the, yeah. the rest of the season here. Yeah, he's he's in a position that he needs to close that strong because uh, some SWAC schools, FCS programs, if they don't close out strong, they may be knocking on his door. Um, as we say, those back channels may be working right now. You never know how that goes. Yes, With that, I'm going to sneak in one more for you, Steve. Uh, I do want to ask you about this. Division two. do you believe that Bowie State Bulldogs out of the CIAA and – Albany State, Golden Rams, are they going to be able to sneak a playoff bid in terms of a home game, or do you see an upset in the playoffs? We'll come back and visit a little bit, but just a little cheat notes. What do you think about that, right? Uh, I definitely, I have no doubt in my mind right now, I Bowie State on my life. Well, not on my life, but, you know, if, 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 if you ask me, I would definitely say Bowie State. I got um, Albany State, uh, you know, I, 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 I'm kind of scared for them this week. They got they're playing Morehouse and Morehouse has got a little swagger in their back. I'm kind of hey, mm, interesting. Kind of scared for them. I mean, we know what they can do. Um, you know, you you play that big game against. I like Savannah. it. I like it. Go out. I'm there. not saying it's gonna happen, but if it happens, I you know I'm just searches. So yeah, yeah but I think um, Kobe both, said, "Hey, I told you what." What they say may not be the ultimate upset, but closer than everybody predicted for sure. Dr. Mills inside the HBC Sports Lab. We'll be right back after this last break, heading into the fourth quarter. Let's go. We'll be back with the major games of the week for the classic and uh, the non-conference independent matchup. Stick with us. We'll be right back after this quick break. Sugar Chateau Desserts is a specialty bakery located in the Charlotte, North Carolina metro area. We will create delicious and one-of-a-kind treats for any occasion. Sugar Chateau is currently shipping cakes in a jar, offering a variety of different flavors in a single serve container that can help you celebrate in accordance with social distancing. Place your orders today by calling 803-526-7895 or visiting SugarChateauDesserts.com. Are you hungry for authentic Caribbean food? Like jerk, chicken, oxtail, red snapper, shrimp, tofu, and rasta pasta? Well, find your way over to Mango's Caribbean Restaurant, 180 Auburn Avenue, right next to Royal Pika in downtown Atlanta. Mango's Caribbean Restaurant, open daily from 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. And on Friday and Saturday, we're open till 4 a.m. Come to Mango's and put some spice in your life. So we've got a Mango's Caribbean Restaurant, 180 Auburn Avenue, right next to Royal Peacock in downtown Atlanta. For more info or directions, call 404-698-3992 or log on to mangoscaribbeanrestaurant.com. For instant coupons, text M-A-N-G-O-S to 313131. Mango's Caribbean Restaurant, authentic Caribbean cuisine. Press the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they gon' tell you if your team, if they wanna love that and who the ball, who the ball. So listen to Professor Yes Sir yes, and pay attention because he gon' teach a lesson. Yes. This is Dr. Bill with Inside HBC Sports Lab with Professor Bishop and Professor Gaither. A couple of good comments going in there uh, talking about. Uh, Willie Alexander is the coach at Albany State on hot commodity. Yes, Karen Griffin says he should be, along with Langston coach. Another good call. Willie Alexander mm. picks it up and said, and is this the year that somebody comes gets Coach Wilson and Bowie State away? Great it's point. It's time. Like it's it. time. Let's go into the major division classic game of the week. Birmingham, Alabama, the greatest tailgate. HBCU experience in terms of a classic for sure. It's a bucket list. Magic City Clash of Legion Field. Swag. Saturday, October the 30th. 2.30 it is on ESPN3. Alabama A&M. 3-3, and 1-3 three and three, and three at Alabama State, if you would. Hornets, 3-3, three 2-2 three, two and two in terms of this matchup. Man, it's for bragging rights. <laughs> Maybe a little more than that as well. 
I'm going to be nice. Charles, Bishop, what are your thoughts on the Magic City Classic matchup? Yeah, it's a, this is a tough one to call this year because um, I was uh, pretty impressed with Alabama State uh, defensively in, uh, in terms of some of the things that they were able to do uh, to Jackson State in terms of getting to the quarterback a little bit there. Uh, but it's just quite quite a, a hill to overcome, if you will, for, for Alabama State to, to climb over uh, Alabama a and this. You're still t- taking a look at A&M being a SWAC's top offense. They're averaging uh, 31 points a game. Quill Glass is still throwing for over 300 yards a game. Like, like 333 yards game. It's still, it's still Gary Qualls. He is uh, second in the slack in rushing. So I think it's still a little bit too much offensive firepower for Alabama State. And uh, they, uh, Miles Crowley, he's going to have to play the game of his life to get this win for the Alabama State Hornets. So I'm going to go with the Bulldogs on this. Yeah, shout out to President Eugenie and the Alabama faithful that put this uh, video together. Magic City Classic is here. President Eugenie is the Atomic Bulldog. That was fascinating. Uh, Coach Maynard <laughs> was all in it getting done. The AG got a little fun. Omega sci-fi. Oh, man, with his boots on, Eugenie actually did some steps. And the outtake was probably better than anything that you could put together. Shout out to Good Spirits, Good Fun, bringing it. I love it. I got the students involved. Steve Gaither, but as we get back into this matchup, what are your thoughts? Which way is this going? Yeah, I'm going to um, say that the bye week came, uh, couldn't have come, well, I'm not going to say it couldn't have come at a better time. Probably could have came after uh, Charles and them plastered the field, uh, you know, <laughs> uh, lit up the scoreboard, did the scoreboard check game. Probably could have came after that, but, uh, you know, got FAMU out of the way. So um, I- I'm looking to see Alabama A&M bounce back this week. Uh, Alabama State's defense is no slouch, but they're not Jackson State and they're not FAMU. So, um, I would say that uh, I would say that Alabama A and M gets back on track this week. Um, you know, finishes out the season strong, playing. For, you know, they're playing for a lot of pride on the line. So I expect to see them come out looking refreshed and 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 hopefully, you know, they'll they'll have their spirits back up. Two T Tickets dot com. Two T Tickets dot com. I told you all season long. I know you're going to Max City. You better put on these masks out here, or at least make sure that you have your shot protect. Other people, you know, it's bigger than you. Alabama State, Alabama a and Steve Stephen Gaither, you just say who you going with. You got to pick on the show. Who you going? Who you got? Going with the Maroon, with the Maroon team. I don't like Maroon, but I'll go with Alabama a and <laughs> Charles? Definitely going with Alabama a and on this. Ooh, going with Coach Maynard. My yeah. boy, Dr. He Ely is going to be in trouble, man. I hope he can make it work. I, I, you know, I, he got that doctor. I don't want him to come to the faculty ranks quite yet, but, man, y'all trying to push the man out. With that being said, let's go into the HBCU Independent Non-Conference Major Division Game of the Week. I'm telling you, he might surprise y'all. Don't let, don't get it done now. Alabama State finds a way to get it done in a lot of ways, but maybe not so much this weekend. We'll see. Nashville, Tennessee, Nissan Stadium, OVC, Murray State Racers, Historic White College is three and four, zero oh and two at number six. Tennessee State Tigers four and three, two and one. Who the thunk it? Tennessee State Tigers on a winning streak. The bigger question: This game may not be who wins it, uh, but it may be in terms of what is the tennis. But that's another question for the day. Mm. Let me go back to you, Stephen Gaither, and talk about this matchup: the races and Tennessee State Tigers. Who you got in this matchup? Yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna roll with Big Blue. I think um, we saw Murray State earlier this year, I believe, against Valley. Was That that was them. Um, you know, good, solid program. But I think uh, Coach George uh, and his staff have uh, – there was some talent that was there already. I think they found – they're finding some things that work. Jeremy Hickbottom has had some, some good games. And uh, they're finding their foot in there at the right time. Uh, you know, we saw Coach George talking about the uh, attendance. And obviously, when you get those – wins back to back to back, you know, now, you know, folks got to come out and support and support them no matter who they play. I mean, I think that's something uh, that we as HBCU is just going to have to get in the mode to no matter what, no matter who we play, uh, if our school is playing at home, you know, we should be there. So uh, we'll see what happens. But I, I like I like uh, Big Blue stay on the roll and uh, continue to put the OVC on notice that they're, they're going to be a force. Yeah. yeah. Good point. Good points all there, although from a marketing perspective, you better learn how to make sure you market to people differently 
if culturally they're not getting what they expect. So we'll mm -hmm. see about that. And people need to consider that when they make moves in terms of what is your overall aim or what are you trying to get done in terms of branding your institution. Uh, with that, Professor Bishop, what do you think about this matchup? Yeah, I, I like Tennessee State in this one. Uh, Tennessee State, surprisingly to me, they have the top defense in the OBC this year. They've been playing uh, light, lights out defense. They've been turning teams over, uh, things of that nature. But uh, the work with Jeremy Hickbaum, 10, uh, 10 touchdowns, only three interceptions. And that was the knock on him, Edge Ramblin, in terms of protecting the football. He's done a much, much better job of that uh, at Tennessee State. They've uh, worked wonders with him in terms of uh, just him protecting the football. And uh, one thing that I saw with regards to this game, Murray State, a little bit of an up and down team, but uh, Austin P just ran through them last week. And Tennessee State has Devon Starlin, one of the top running backs in the OBC. So uh, looking for Big Blue to stay on a roll and get the win over Murray State. Should be a, a nice little win for Tennessee State to keep the momentum going. So you say they got Austin P on, huh? They got they got us to beat on. Yeah, they did. <laughs> Man, y'all crazy. Let's go in here. Rapid fire. We don't have to break it down, but I do want to get maybe some cores. Which way you're going to lean? Let's start with the Big South with the HBCU programs. Hampton at Robert Morris. Uh, Stephen Gaither, who you got in that matchup? Give me Hampton. Roll with the Pirates. They rolling right now. Good one. Let's Roll stick the over there with you with the Big South. Monmouth in North Carolina a t who you got in G Hope? Halftime. Oh, wow. Halftime AT. Monmouth for the game. Info. <laughs> yeah, some people say that Mama may need to leave on the band, but you're right. They do all come to play football. Different conversation. Charles Bishop staying with Monmouth and AT, and then we'll back up to Hampton and Robert Morris. What do you got? Yeah, I definitely got to go with Mammoth. Uh, uh, like I said, to, to get the football game, uh, and T to get the halftime show, and then when we take a look at Hampton, Hampton is rolling right now. I expect them to get the W over Robert Morris. No doubt, no doubt. Good comments. Let's go to the Miac. Continue wrap up. Howard, Howard versus Delaware State. Howard two and five. Delaware State three and four. Sticking with you, Charles. Who you got this matchup? It's a tough one, maybe. This is a tough one. I was really maybe impressed. Not. I was impressed last week watching Howard uh, uh, as they took on Norfolk State. Huh. Give me the Bison in this. One. I like the Bison. I like I like some of the things they were doing last week against Man. Norfolk State. Stephen Gates, you see him pausing over there. Howard Delaware State, who you got? I take Howard. Morgan Norfolk State. I imagine. Morgan. Going with this one, you, you know, you already predicted Norfolk State in the uh, uh, Celebration Bowl, so do they hold the course right now? I mean, the Bears are hibernating. They're, they're, they're done for the season. <laughs> Norfolk State in the Yeah, you know, 7 5 or 2. I, I stand corrected. I was just giving with you, Charles. Yeah, the Dawson Legion, they're on a the roll. I expect the Fighting Dawsons to go ahead and get the W. All right, well, let's go to the big game of the week down there. MEAC, the court of MEAC, they will have the television program uh, as they do their second game of the week. All games are played in the conference. Fascinating. I like what they're doing with that uh, program of the week. South Carolina State and North Carolina Central. South Carolina State 3-4, and four, as well as Central 3-4. and four. This is a big one. South Carolina State is talking about getting enrolled, but Central got a big win last week, Ken. Central throws a monkey wrench in all this and go back to what they did earlier against Alcorn State, or will the Bulldogs continue to roll, Charles? I'm going to go with the Bulldogs. I, I still like Corey Fields and Shaq Davis in terms of, uh, to me, they're, they're the best uh, quarterback-receiver duo in the MEAC. I expect for them to get things rolling, and uh, North Carolina Central is going to have a tough time stopping. Stephen Gaither, what's your matchup? This is one you said you might be able to sneak over this. You're going to go do the basketball game with one side of State and Duke. That's a good one to be at. But then you might have a chance to at least catch the end of this. What's going to be on the scoreboard when you get over there to see the end of this game? I'm going to roll. I'm going to go with, a, I'm going to go with my North Carolina bias over South Carolina. North Carolina. <laughs> um, I think South Carolina State could win this one by a lot, but they made it close with Delaware State. And I think if it – stays close and stays ugly, then I definitely favor uh, the Eagles. They like it ugly. Interesting. I love it. Make it interesting to me. 
already. Let's slip down to the SWAC. We talked about Alabama A&M. Let's go back up to Arkansas, Pine Bluff, Texas Southern. One and six, Texas Southern one and five. This might be one of the last chances for Pine Bluff to get a win in terms of the conference race. But they're going to Houston. Texas Southern can put up points. Gaither, what are your thoughts in terms of the Pine Bluff and Texas Southern? For Pine Bluff, I had such high hopes for them. And, uh, you know, I think after the second half of that Alcorn State game, they just fell apart. Uh, you know, and this is a team that counts for Texas Southern, and uh, they'll actually get the win at this one. So. Charles? Yeah, injuries have really killed UAPB this past season. Uh, uh, when you take a look at some of the weapons they had in the spring. But uh, too much uh, quarterback, Andrew Body and Keelan Davis. Keelan Davis is top receiver in the SWAC. He's uh, averaging almost uh, 100 yards per game. And last week, he had a big game against Alcorn. So look for Texas Southern to get another W. Yeah, you talk about they circled the schedule when this came out in terms of homecoming with FAMU coming into the SWAC. This was a big one. Bramlin on the road at FAMU. Bramlin comes in three and four. Florida a and 5-2, trying to continue to see if they can make a statement for the playoffs if it happens to go their way. Do they get it done, Charles, this weekend against Gramlin, who's known to be tricky when people think that they're down? Can they find a way to G-Man to live up to that reputation this weekend, Charles? No, still a lot on the line for Florida a and They're trying to position themselves to get to the playoffs. Too much Bishop Bonnet, too much uh, Jamar Sharid. I, I expect for uh, the Florida a and defense to really lock down on Gramlin. Uh, you can't keep Isaiah Land our quarterback. So uh, I expect for the Rattlers to get the W. True, very true. Steve Gaither, Gramlin family, what you got? Why not Gramlin? I'll tell you why not. Because Gramlin's <laughs> often can <laughs> use defense and – that's not a matchup, and I, I don't see this one. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Nah, still, nah. he's still the young gun. So you say Bowling got a little time; he got to grow up. Mm. Swag out. Let's go to the midnight matchup: Alcorn State and Southern. Man, clash of the titans. Been in the Swag Championship game the last couple of years. Southern is fellas back, but can they make that last statement home? Can they get it done? I'm gonna start with you, Steve Gaither. What are your thoughts in terms of Alcorn Southern? Uh, I'm just going to – I picked Southern to win the SWAC uh, at the beginning of the year. And, uh, yeah, I, I was wrong. I can admit when I was wrong. Uh, <laughs> Alcorn State uh, just finds a way to win. I think last week they got a lot of confidence pulling away uh, when they hadn't been able to pull that's away true. before. So uh, I think um going to be rough on the bluff this week. I think that's how they say it over there at Southern in Baton Rouge. Yeah, five and two, three and four. Charles, what do you say about this matchup? Dr. Bell, I can guarantee you this conversation happened this past week in Baton Rouge. One spouse looked to the other spouse. They looked at the schedule and they asked, um, do you still want to go to New Orleans? Because I'm not feeling it all of a sudden. So I think that's probably going to be the case. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think uh, Alcorn, Alcorn will go down to, to uh, Baton Rouge and take care of business. A lot on the line for the Braves. And uh, they're not going to play around with the Jacks this weekend. Nice one, nice one. Let's shift over to that big Mississippi State rivalry. Jackson State is on the road, Mississippi Valley State. Coach Prime is still on the men. Staying with you, Steve Gaither, what are your thoughts in terms of this matchup? Can Valley do the upset of the year? Almost got FAMU last weekend. They did almost get FAMU. I really like Valley. I really like their coach. I think he should be up for some other jobs in the SWAT as well. But mm. I can't. But uh, I can't go. I, I can't go. And I enjoyed my visit to Itabina the other week. Uh, but I got to go with uh, Jackson State. I, I just think they they get it done. But uh, you know they're going they're going to put some paws on Jackson JSU. But that's for sure. Oh, there it is. There it is. That offensive line has to protect Shador Sanders in terms of his matchup. I don't mean that it's going to be something that will cause them to lose the game. But they have bigger plans in terms of going and getting it done against Southern Alcorn and making a statement all the way to the championship game and hosting it, uh, which will be a sight for many. With that being said, Paul Bishop, the pregame show is going to be in Itabina. Tell us about this matchup and why people should tune into the show pregame show. Uh, number one, uh, Valley always plays Jackson State hard. I mean, there's never not a time uh, where uh, Jackson State and Valley is not just going to be an absolute brawl. Uh, when we last saw Valley play uh, Jackson State uh, prior to the spring, 
Uh, that game went into overtime, and Jackson State had to have a furious rally in the fourth quarter just to get it to overtime. Coach Dancy always has his teams up for uh, whomever they play, but it's something different. It's a rivalry when you're talking about Valley and Jackson State. Jackson State owns this series literally 60 to 7. And I can guarantee you, any Valley fan, they can tell you every one of those seven wins. Because I that the I, I cried a thug tear back in 84 when Valley beat Jackson State with, with Willie Ty and Jerry Bryant. That that still resonates in my soul, 49-32, because I saw Jerry Rice running around all over the place that game. But, I mean, it, it is what it is. It's, it's going to be a heck of a game. But I just think Jackson State with this defense, this is a defense of yesteryear. I, I know some of the old head Jackson State football players, they want to hear it. But, listen, this this defense is tapping on something uh, that we haven't seen in a long, long time. They lead the nation in sacks. They have 32 thus far, the number two defense in the nation. They just get after the quarterback. But more than, more than anything, what they do is they cut off the run. Uh, and I think that's going to be the huge thing in terms of stopping uh, Caleb Johnson's number six rusher uh, in the swag. But they make you one-dimensional and they come after the quarterback. So that's that's what it's going to take for Jackson State to get to them. <laughs> Lonnie Shaw showing off. He's talking about Houston in terms of Texas Southern was bottom feeding when he was here in the them and they still feed him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, catfish. Catfish at Texas Southern University. That's not nice, man. That's not nice. Uh before we do it, let you go. Everybody should know how to get with you, but it wouldn't be fair if we didn't ask you. Tell them how folks can follow you, Steve. Yeah, sure. Of course, I always follow HBCUGames.com. Go there every day. Click on everything that you can click on. I'd like it if you read it, but even if you don't, I won't be offended. I'm just kidding. Um, so go to the <laughs> web. Uh, and then also, uh, you know, follow us on Twitter, social media, uh, Facebook, TikTok. We're doing a little bit of the TikTok, and then you can follow me at Stephen J. Gaither, Stephen with a V, J. Gaither, G-A-I-T-H-E-R. No doubt about it. Good job. Reginald Johnson, Charles Bishop, I was in the stadium for that 1984 matchup as well. What a heartbreaking day for the D fan base, boy. Third tier, third uh, tier. Reginald yeah. Johnson, yeah, he's getting it done. Thank you for listening to Inside the HBC Sports Live. Make sure you share our podcast with your friends and colleagues. I am Dr. Nicoville. The Dean of HBCU Sports coming from inside the lab in the College of HBCU Sports with Mike Watch, Charles Bishop. Special guest today was Professor Gaither. That's Stephen Gaither, the HBCU game day. We hope you enjoyed the interview uh, as we get it done and talking about the first part of the show as he broke the news. We gave you that type of information there. I hope you enjoyed that information as well. Again, we want to thank you for listening to Dr. Ville's side of HBCU Sports Lab with Mike Watch and Charles Bishop every Tuesday and Thursday right here at Spock. And on Sundays at 9 o'clock a.m. before you head to church to get out for your get breakfast, check us out. We'll break down all the action that happened that week, particularly the Saturday matchups, uh, as we give you those games of the week that we broke down during the week. We look forward to next week as we continue to discuss the latest in the news. Check us out on Sunday as well. Follow me, Dr. Kenyatta Cavill, on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. It's D-R-K-E-N-Y-A-T-T-A-C-A-V-I-L. Make sure you download my JBN, my BCSN app. Make sure you check out and follow Charles Bishop. Uh, they're giving you all you need at the pregame show, as well as 1876 Sports and Culture Podcast. Dream big and continue to move forward. Time for the quiz. We will talk with you soon. Steven? Appreciate it. <laughs> Cars. Yeah. Lecture. Roy. Roy, you back. Lecture. Dismiss. <laughs> <laughs>